Hello iPad leaders! I've received quite a few requests to do another block lettering tutorial in Procreate and of course I'm more than happy to do this because it's a super popular lettering style and it's really fun and easy to do as well. I will be showing you my whole process from start to finish. These lettering pieces really lend themselves for printing as well. Here's an example of one that I've printed on canvas and I've actually made a video where I'm showing you the printing process as well and I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video if you are curious to find out how to print these after you've finished the lettering. The lettering piece we're going to create today is going to say no one is you and that is your power. I really really like this quote. It's really encouraging and it will be a very nice reminder anywhere you decide to put this in your home. And you might have a loved one that might need a little bit of encouragement and so this would be a perfect gift for them. I always like doing a sketch first and use my sketching brush for this but you can use any Procreate brush for example the HB pencils that you'll find in the brush library is really nice for this as well. And then the canvas that I'm using for this lettering piece is the small watercolor canvas from my watercolor doodles and abstract art set. The size of the canvas is 2048 by 2560 pixels. For your first sketch you simply want to write the phrase and then underline the most important words. This will give you some guidance as to the layout to choose. And then you want to create a number of different different sketches with different layouts. I really recommend that you try putting words on different lines and then see what you get from that. My sketches always look really ugly but the point here is to work quite fast and at this point all you're trying to establish is which words to place on which line. You'll see that I've also drawn a couple of rectangles around my quote to test out if I like the shape. And then once you're happy with your layer, you can cut out the shape and then copy and paste it on a new layer. Either double tap on your Apple Pencil or swipe down with three fingers to bring up the copy and paste menu. This will now place your quote on a new layer. Open up the layers panel to turn off the visibility of your other sketches and then grab your quote and place it in the center of the canvas. Open up the layers panel again to create a new layer above your quote and at the same time turn down the opacity of your quote layer so that you can use it as a guide for the next step. We are now going to create another rectangle guide. This time you might like to use the quick shape tool. You can draw the whole rectangle in one go if you like but I prefer to create individual lines instead. Draw the line and hold down your Apple Pencil until the line snaps into place and then hold down another finger on the screen to place the line into the perfect vertical and horizontal lines. And now my aim is a little bit off here but it's not a problem. We can just delete the overlap. All right, now let's create another layer and let's do another round of sketching. We are still at the sketching phase, this time trying to establish the hierarchy between the words to see how we can fit them nicely into the box. If your words end up a little wonky like mine did here, you can use the warp tool to straighten them. This is another reason why I love working digitally in Procreate. You can't really make any mistakes and if you do, it's really easy to fix. You might also like to add some weight to your letters now by tracing them to increase the thickness of the strokes. This step is optional though but I really like doing it because I like the feel of my sketching brush and it's another way to check the hierarchy of the words in your quote. Next up create another new layer and also turn down the opacity of your sketching layer. It's time to get real. I also recommend you switch brushes now and use one of your lettering brushes. I like using the modern lettering brush from my dream lettering set for this step because it's pressure sensitive and creates a solid line. Trace your whole sketch and really use the thick strokes this brush creates to your advantage. You don't have to be too precise yet but you want to end up with the bones of your lettering piece. Then it's time to use the warp tool again to adjust the words and letters to create even spacing between the lines. And let's not forget to add the cute little sparkles around the word you. All right, so now we can turn our sketching layer off and create a new layer. And we're getting into the refining stage of our lettering process now. For this step, I recommend that you use a monoline brush. I like using my totally crispy brush, but you could use any monoline brush that's part of Procreate as well if you wanted to. So now what we're going to do is go around all our letters and create a little box around each stroke 
to even out the thickness like this. You don't have to be too precise at this stage and I recommend that you only create the outlines that you're not filling in the gaps at this stage. I really like going quite fast here and not spend too much time. This prevents you from being too analytical at the start and then get frustrated because you don't think it's going to look nice. Really all you want to do is go through all your letters as fast as possible and create the little boxes around each of the strokes. Once you've done that it's time to fill in the gaps. You still want to go relatively fast here and not pay too much attention to the details of each letter but focus more on the spacing between the letters and words. You might also find opportunities to nestle letters into each other like I've done with the T and H. This step takes a little while so I'm going to speed up the video and put some relaxing music on. While you're watching this and if you have enjoyed the video so far, boop the like button and maybe consider adding a comment with your feedback. I always like to improve my videos to make them more helpful for you and so any recommendations will be much appreciated. When you're done with this step you'll have a very good impression of what the final lettering piece is going to look like. You might want to zoom in and out a few times to spot parts that you would like to improve. The nice thing about this lettering style is that it is quite forgiving. Even if not all your letters have the exact same thickness and not all spaces are equal, it's still going to look nice and will have a very nice hand lettered feel. In the past I've made my block lettering pieces reasonably rectangular but for this piece I thought it would be fun to create slightly more rounder edges. So for each letter I'm trying to create almost like a little bubble at the top and at the bottom of each letter like this. If there's a part of a letter you don't like now is the time to refine it. Sometimes it can also be helpful to erase part of a letter and just redraw it. I spend quite a long time on this step because I find it really relaxing. I like to put on my favorite podcast and enjoy working on the refinement until I'm happy with it. And now comes the fun part and that is coloring in our lettering piece. Thank you to everyone who has voted on that color scheme. It was a lot closer than I thought but the rainbow colors prevailed on both polls on Instagram and also here on YouTube. So rainbow colors it is. Make sure you create the new layer before you start with this. The color palette I'm using here is my IPL 2024 color palette that you can get for free from my website. And the brush is the Texture Blend brush from my Watercolor Doodles brush set. So now you simply want to paint in your rainbow colors over the letters. Then open up the layers panel, duplicate your coloring layer and merge the two coloring layers together. This ensures that all the letters are completely covered with your colors. Then tap on the layer thumbnail of the merged layers and select clipping mask. And just like that we filled in our lettering piece with color. Now we're going to refine the colors a bit. Select the textured blend brush from that smudging menu and let's blend the colors to create a nice gradient. 
If you wanted the texture to be super smooth, you could also use the Gaussian Blur adjustment here, but I want to preserve some of the texture the brush created, so I'm using the Smudge tool instead. Of course, you can also add in some additional color if you're not quite happy with your rainbow yet, and then continue to smudge the colors. And now let's add in an extra bit of magic to our lettering piece with some splatters. Make sure you create the new layer first above your lettering piece. If you have my watercolor doodles brush set, you can use the random splatters brush for this. Pick any color you like, it won't matter because we're going to copy the coloring layer from the lettering piece and then also create a clipping mask just above that splatters layer. You can now see why using a clipping mask is so useful. You can then adjust your coloring layer to cover all your splatters. And once you're done, tap on the layer thumbnail to create your clipping mask. This is looking very nice already, but let me show you one last bit of magic by adding some extra texture. Create the new layer above your splattering layer and set the blend mode to overlay. Select the black color and a textured brush. I like using my salty texture overlay brush from the watercolor doodle set for this because it adds some really nice light and dark splatters. If you find that your artwork becomes a bit too dark, you can go back to your original coloring layer and add in some additional lighter colors and then smudge them out again. And there you have it. This is our block lettering piece from start to finish. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.